Well, it was the summer of 1970. Uh, I was at uh, New York at Rockefeller with Bill Traeger, and uh, and he had said, well, well, and he had this kind of approach to uh, conversation. Uh, do you want to stay here during the summer? Or we often go to Woods Hole. I said, really? Oh, yes, we at the Rockefeller have a lab, and it's free. I said, it's free? And so uh, I thought, well, that might be the place to go, especially the summer. Nothing's happening here in New York anyway in the summer, so that happened. That uh, came on over here. Uh, so it started in 1970, and what was uh, memorable was uh, Richard Weissman, uh, Weisenberg, from uh, who was, uh, got his degree around 1907 or 8 in Berl uh, Germany, uh, sent me a letter. He was in Philadelphia, and um, he had indicated he did for his doctorate uh, so, uh, a project on microsporidians in monkfish, or referred to as the goosefish, or anglerfish species. Would I be so kind as to go out and look into the brain area of the monkfish and see if I can recover some microspridian spores? And I thought, what a request. I didn't even know what the fish looked like. And uh, so I thought, well, what's the incidence of infection 0.0001% turned out they all were infected, so it was an easy thing to fill out as far as his request. So he was well into his 90s, and I ultimately was able to go over to Philadelphia by train, and we had a good visit. And he told some good stories. What happened was, of course, he initiated me into working on that parasite. And so I've been working on that or playing with that parasite off and on. Since then, so 44 years later, I'm still playing with that uh, uh, microspridium. The people, mostly. I think the community is equally good, and so they have a good library here. I think the, it just uh, as if we make the assumption uh, that uh, uh, the sea is always around us and is great, the same way here at the MBL Library is central. It's always been central, and it's. Um, I think we sometimes over underestimate the the library, just like we underestimate other things. But um, and then of course the, the people associated with the MBL. That's no question. That's it. The geography is peripheral. I think so. My my estimation is that I come to Woods Hole. Um, <clears throat> Mainly because I think over the long haul, uh, I can become a better person by simply coming back every year. And so that's the best thing is that people are in a relaxed mode. They're not dressed up in suits. There is no peck order to speak of, and so they can get on with their business. So at the university uh, setting back home, it's a little different. It probably was even more different, say, um, 50 years ago when I started uh, as a, um, a lowly assistant professor. Uh, I felt like I was one level below a grad student. And, um, and the full professor uh, was dominant. I uh, just happened to have a list here. Uh, and I think it's in here someplace. Oh, uh, one of the most memorable people was Benjamin uh, Sonnenblick. And I've got a, a very interesting story about Ben. Ben got his degree at Columbia right before World War II. He was working on Drosophila. And uh, as they were all working on seemingly on Drosophila at Columbia. And um, so just finished up, and Plunkett, his mentor, said, well, say, Ben, uh, uh, we got a young lad here. This is actually going to connect the MBL, this story, um, that uh, needs to learn the Folgenstein for DNA. Could you uh, meet uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow in the lab? This tomorrow's a Saturday. 
uh, and he's a high school student and he'll he'll be okay and Ben said okay so he wanders in the next morning the lab door is wide open here comes this young lad up reaches out and said Josh Letterberg here what's your name oh um, well of course he's I'm Ben Sonnenblick <coughs> Dr. Ben Sonnenblick I wanted to make sure he had that ratio of difference <laughs> between him and the uh, young student okay everything goes well about 60 plus years later um, Letterberg's giving the Friday night lecture here. He's probably into his 70s now, well into his, probably 75, let's say. And he's giving the Friday night lecture. And it's good. And then we all meet over the swope for a wine and cheese. There's Ben. And Ben is standing in line to shake hands. Ben is a little smaller now never was very big but he's shrunk slightly and he's well up you know, being a World War II veteran um, he's probably well into his 80s so um, so he gets up to uh, uh, Letterberg and he said reaches out and said Ben Sonnenblick here you may remember that some years ago I taught you the Fulgen reaction. There is a, just a dullness in Letterberg's eye, and then he sees a little light pop up on maybe each eye, and there is a slight m smile comes up, and then Letterberg says to the people there, Hey, this uh, fellow here some years ago taught me the Fulgen reaction. I first uh, shared a lab with uh, Bob Barlow and Fred Dodge. Uh, we, uh, um, and of course they were working on vision and doing some recordings in, uh, uh, in the, the horseshoe crab. And we become pals. And um, Marlow, of course, was regular here every summer and a very significant MBLer, I think. It was huge, the number of people working that had labs here. Uh, Clark Reed would come in every summer from Rice University. And, um, and, and right down the hall here had uh, Frank Brown, who sh uh, shared a lab with, uh, and I could perhaps later at this time, in the 70s, he had his own lab. And of course, he uh, interfaced with uh, Lad Prosser, who was, came here for many years. Oh, I have a good story on Ted Shedlovsky, who uh, used to come in from Rockefeller. Every, he was more of a chemist than some of us. Uh, um, mostly towards biology, in his case, a chemist. And he would bring his, uh, let's see, his, uh, what was his wife's name? God. Um, B. Uh, and uh, he, he had good stories too, because he started coming here real early. Um, and of course, uh, in the 40s, he was asked to give a Friday night lecture. Oh dear, so he does, and he looks down, and there in the front row center was Otto Warburg, who Nobel laureate, of course, and uh, from fresh out of Germany right after World War II. And he looks, and Warburg's asleep. Oh, great, to himself. So later they go to the wine and cheese, and uh, Warburg goes up to Shedlovsky, and he said, well, Ted, I enjoyed your talk tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, Shedlovsky said, but you were asleep, weren't you? Well, that's true, Warburg said. I always sleep during the good talks. <laughs> Uh, 
I was, uh, no. I sat in on uh, the embryology course a little bit and uh, some of the invertebrate zoology and of course uh, I give a lecture or two in the parasit biology of parasitism about 30, 20 some years ago. Sent a number of students here to take courses uh, and, uh, and I thought uh, my personal uh, um, belief is that, and I think it's probably close to right, is that uh, this is a great place for students to get tuned in on not only meeting uh, some quality scientists uh, that are in doing work in the course, but they can pick up some tools, uh, methods that really help them. And so, in fact, uh, uh, I think the few of the students that I've had, uh, they become pretty good students, as, or I should say workers in their field because of their initiation right here. I think it was on a Friday uh, evening in uh, 1973. We had a house next to the aquarium over here and uh, there was three guys and uh, we'd been eating uh, f fish and shrimp all summer. And I said, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to go into Falmouth and get a large steak. So my turn to cook. So I went up and got a very large steak for so we could divide it three ways. Put it on the grill outside of the old house. I went upstairs to do the uh, salad, and uh, I'm going to turn the steak over, and it's gone. Ah, oh, I was really furious because I thought maybe a Labrador retriever had come by and thought, wow, a free snack. <laughs> so, uh, but then I looked off towards Nanamesset and there was this flock of gulls flying there and chasing the lead gull. And obviously the lead gull was struggling and I found very soon that it was the steak. And what had happened was he was being chased so vigorously by those other gulls that he came over and dropped a steak practically right on the lawn where we were standing and I picked it up, washed it off and put it back on the grill. So we had steak after all, oh, the first one and the last one that summer.